Hi, my name is Andrei Litvinchenko. I'm currently finishing my law degree and a master's degree in international affairs specializing in economic policy. The, the paper I, I wrote for this conference called On the Economics of Regime Design looks at the issue of trying to negotiate an international treaty and the kind of information uh, or considerations that you as a negotiator need to be aware of. When I was going into the literature, I found that there were many very good case studies, uh, um, studies on the theories of negotiation, on compliance, on what makes a good treaty, but all those individual works, um, they don't seem to be synthesized into a single tool or checklist or a model. And as a result of that, if you don't have a lot of experience or you haven't read these case studies, uh, it, it, it would be difficult for you to do the job uh, competently. So what I made was um, a, a, an economic model that puts in a couple of key variables. These are the variables that I found all throughout the literature and that forces you to consider what will be the consequence of changing any provision in a treaty. So, for example, if, if, uh, if the decision-making structure is currently a majority rules uh, mechanism, but you want to change it to consensus, what will be the consequences of that? Would it make the regime more legitimate? Would it make it more uh, equitable, fair to, to the different people, to the different parties? Would it be an appropriate change? So, the way the model works isn't to give you a magical answer on this is the perfect uh, regime, this is what you need to do. It's more of to allow you to ask questions, even if you don't have the experience and you don't know the case studies that people usually draw on as analogies to help them ask questions about a problem. I think it's important in, in the general sense of, of trying to make it easier uh, for um, junior level practitioners. Uh, in particular for developing countries who might not yet have as many senior negotiators or uh, the, the resources to hire foreign expertise, advice, or foreign negotiators so that they can give their junior level uh, staff basically a, a, an analytical tool that they can learn quickly and with very little information just the information on their own country, on the information on the other countries negotiating the other side of the table, and the general context of what's going on, to be able to take into consideration every proposal for every uh, provision or clause in the treaty, and very quickly come to an understanding of what are the possible consequences of this. This way, uh, these individuals can then go back to their more senior uh, managers or chief negotiators and say, hey boss, I've, I've, I've run the model and I've come with these various alternatives. I think the policy implications, at least for a government, is that um, as a training tool, as a, as a pedagogy, uh, your, your uh, entry level or your junior officers can do uh, work more efficiently uh, work that that they may not yet have the experience for or, the, or may not have read enough case studies uh, in a way that's more objective and less dependent on their knowledge. For your expert uh, level, your senior, senior uh, government staff, it gives them a very efficient uh, tool that they can very quickly run through the various uh, considerations and because they have the experience on the case study knowledge they can predict much better um, and they can use the model to very quickly create policy uh, alternatives to present to whoever's above them.